Welcome to Shameless Plugs. Hello. We are once again in the basement studio to talk about reading, writing, and relentlessly self-promote ourselves. Yes, because we're the best. We are the best. Mm -hmm. We posted on Instagram just recently about how we're the best podcast for a snow day. Yeah, exactly. So if you have a snow day, listen to us. If mm -hmm. you don't have a snow day, Still listen, listen to, to us. us. <laughs> I mean, obviously. <laughs> Duh. <clears throat> um, so, good morning. Good morning. It's morning for us. It is. It is morning for us. Per usual. Yes. Saturday mornings is when we record. Mm hmm Early. Yes. So this morning is not as early as usual. True. And it's probably kind of warm outside compared to the last few days. It's warm-ish. Warm-ish. Well, it's warm in comparison. Oh. Yeah, like you said. It's it's yes. 34, I think. Oh, that's not bad at all. So that's much... I mean, much... that's like... That, that's like t-shirt weather. That's a heat wave compared to what <laughs> we've had lately, so... Um, <clears throat> so today on the podcast, we're going to talk about habits. Yes. Have you ever worn a habit? Oh. <laughs> In spite of the <laughs> multiple bouts of cross-dressing that took place for me during college, <laughs> I have never worn a habit. I'm just curious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> I came up with that joke the other day. Hey, yeah. you know where I came up with it in? Where? The shower. Oh, oh! shocking. Throwback. Yeah, listen to our last episode <laughs> if you haven't already. Yep. So anyway, but just habits in general, both mm -hmm. on the reading side of things and the writing side of things. Yes. Because these are both kind of interesting, settle into your world kind of things. Yes. And I'm doing a squid dance. Yes, she is doing a squid dance right now. <laughs> um, and, you know, since our lead, our, I was about to say our... <laughs> I was about to say our leaders when I was trying to say our listeners because I was combining listeners with readers. So, <laughs> woo! Our listeners, uh -huh, uh -huh. they're a, you know, they're a literary bunch. They're they readers. Are. They're writers. So, mm -hmm. yes, we, as are we. Exactly. So, cool. Well, um, so I think we are going to chat about some reading habits. The yep. where's, what's, how's, and why's of reading. Well, probably yes. not the how. We hope that that's taken care sort of. Sort of how. Kind of, I guess. One of the things we're going to talk about is a how. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it is. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, but how. Reading. <clears throat> yes, reading. <laughs> um, so, I guess I tend to read all over the place. I don't mm -hmm. have, like, a specific chair or anything that I, I read yeah. in. Mm -hmm. I just go wherever my book is. Yeah. Or I take my book wherever I am. Yeah. Unless it's gigantic and then it doesn't leave my house. Yeah. Because it's heavy. Under yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have by proxy, not by proxy, that's not quite right, but I have ended up by circumstance. <laughs> as a result of circumstance, I have ended up with a place that I read. Mm -hmm. It's on the exercise equipment at the gym. <laughs> 99% of the time when I actually am able to devote the time to reading, it is when I am doing cardio at the gym. Nice. It is on the elliptical machine or whatever I'm doing, which is mostly the elliptical machine. I'm That's when I read. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's strictly because I don't have a whole lot of downtime when I'm home. So my choice is with my downtime, do I write or do I mm -hmm. read? And I usually choose to write. So... It ends up being that my downtime, <laughs> my downtime, and I'm doing air quotes, mm -hmm. um, is when I'm doing cardio. So I read at the gym. Hi. Mm -hmm. My reading is far <laughs> less calorie burning. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I... I'm usually consuming calories when yeah. I'm reading. <laughs> did not realize that I hadn't thought about it in that context, but <laughs> apparently my uh, reading is a caloric burning exercise it for is, me. It is, yeah. <laughs> you can, like, if anyone asks like you to fill out a survey, you can, how do you burn calories? Reading. reading. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> not just the brain calories. Exactly. <laughs> I had never thought about that until this moment. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. <laughs> brain calories. Yes. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's the gym for me. It's gotten more pronounced since I had kids. Yeah. Um, so now that I am a dad, um, I really have even less time to read. So mm -hmm. Except to them. I they, do read to them. Like to That's read. true. They do like mm -hmm. to read, and I do read to them, and they read to me. Mm -hmm. So, However, 
the stories that I am reading to them, while some of them are wonderful, delightful little tales, they are not necessarily the things that I would be choosing to read for myself. <laughs> what, uh, what do you choose to read for yourself, Ja? <laughs> <laughs> I am, I, I mean, I'll read a little bit of everything. Like, I will read nonfiction and so on, but I'm a science fiction guy primarily. I read, um, I tend to jump around series. I, I usually will get a series, and I have to mm -hmm. read every book in that series. Right now, I'm on a kid's kick. I'll read adult fiction. I'll read young adult. I'll read kids. I'll read whatever. So right now, I am on a kid's kick. I am currently reading... Rick Riordan's Magnus nice. Chase series. Nice. I am about yep. to be done with the first book in that series. Um, I already own subsequent mm -hmm. entries, mm -hmm. and as soon as mm -hmm. I finish, in fact, if I had not been lazy, if I had actually gone <laughs> to the gym this morning, I would have uh, finished off the first one, The Sword of Summer, this morning. So, nice. Yes. But, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> Harry Turtle Dove stuff, um, you know, all... Any th series that I can sink myself into. The uh, the Ender, the spinoff, the Shadow series, mm -hmm. that's another one of my favorites. I own it. Actually, other than Ender's Game, I didn't love the Ender novels mm -hmm. that much. Like, all the Alien stuff just wasn't nearly as interesting to me. But yep. the Shadow stuff with Bean was pretty fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's unfortunate that I don't have that high of opinion of Orson Scott Card as a person these days, but I do like so especially his older work. <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of his older work too. Yeah, some of the newer stuff. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, I read whatever I get my hands on. Mm-hmm. Understandable. All over the place. Yeah. Um, just reread uh, the. First two by uh, Patrick Rothfuss. Mm. Really looking forward to the third one. It's supposed to come out sometime this year. There is a cover image. I'm pretty excited, <laughs> which means it's close. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and then I immediately jumped over to uh, Caleb Carr, who writes mystery, mm. suspense, murder stuff. Gotcha. Um, yes. And so, and then I read a really great book about the dictionary. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun. I you I remember you talking about that yeah. one. That did sound interesting. It was, and that was nonfiction. That was a yeah. great book. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a plug real quick. I was about to do a plug, but please okay. you, you first. All right, I'll plug you first. Um, so I keep a list on my website, SamanthaTheWriter.com, of the stuff that I'm currently reading, or the stuff that I have read, and stuff that I've enjoyed, and stuff that I haven't um, for myself, and then also for my two-person book club that <laughs> has two members. Yes. Hence the name. It's really creative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what we've read and kind of my opinions on that. So that's all out on my website under the book club. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. So that's my plug for myself. Yes. <laughs> my plug is not for myself. <laughs> but it's a shameless plugs. There's nothing wrong with plugging yourself. No. No. Well, you know. You know. You, yeah. <laughs> my plug is for, I think a I haven't heard of this author outside of the querying process because one of the things I like to do, we're going to do a whole episode yeah, we on, are. on mm -hmm. querying in the next couple months here. But, but the uh, point you're about to make is an excellent point. Yes, the point I am, well, thank you. I don't think you, <laughs> I think it's an excellent point. <laughs> but when I am querying, I always try to read work mm -hmm. by that the, the agents that I'm querying that they have mm -hmm. represented. I want to make sure that, you know, just because if I read them in a Jeff Herman yep. book or the uh, whatever agent guide I'm looking at, the Writer's Digest one or the Jeff Herman one, um, <clears throat> I want to make sure that even though they might sound great on paper, that the work that they're representing is something I enjoy, something that I can see mm -hmm. similarities to. And as part of that querying process, I also want to make note of that. If there is something similar, something I enjoyed, because I want each query letter to be personal. Mm -hmm. So as part of that process, I read the uh, I, I read the first novel just for the purposes of querying by an author named Tamara Siler Jones. Mm. I had never heard of her outside of the querying mm -hmm. process. I ended up reading two more I think by her in the same series just because it was me getting hooked on a series again but mm -hmm. it was a really interesting series of novels they were basically medieval and that if you know anything about me you know that I am not into medieval mm -mm. stuff it, Samantha knows that that's mm -hmm. fodder for another podcast it is, but yes. mm -hmm. um, 
I'm not into medieval stuff at all, but this was like medieval forensic science. Oh, cool. And that sounds really it cool. had a, a, a fantasy bent to it because there was magic and everything, nice. but it really was like forensic science and everything. So hmm. it was... It was a very interesting series. So if you have, if that sounds at all appealing to you, my plug is to Tamara Siler Jones. Check out her work. It is very well done and very interesting. And it's a very interesting world that she's built. You can tell that there's she put a lot of effort into the history and so on. So would you like to would you like to rank it? Would you like to give it a plug plug? It I would say. It is a spark plug. Nice. All yeah. right. Yeah. All right. I like that. It's not my absolute number yeah. one, but I enjoyed it enough that I keep kept going back. And is there another mm-hmm. one for me to read? Is there another one yeah. for me to read? I kept All looking right. for more. So, so on shameless yeah. plugs, we got a spark plug. Today. We got a spark plug today. Woo-hoo! Yes. Yay! For, for those of you who don't remember the scale, go to the website. Yeah, check it out. Yeah, I'm yep. not going to tell you what rank that is because I want you to go to our website. There's like a really high tech <laughs> charting system. Yes. Beautifully artistic, Charlie. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, completed by <laughs> yours truly. And my and yours truly. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. We. Um, I guess yours truly could be both of us. Anyway. Yeah. And in this case, it was. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, double yours truly. Yeah. Times two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about your reading? More on reading habits. Yes. How more. many books do you read at a time? Do you have to have silence? That kind of stuff. <laughs> like, you know, what does your environment or atmosphere need to be like? Um, quiet. Mm-hmm. I'm a quiet person reader. Like, yeah. I just, whatever white noise is in my house is mm-hmm. usually enough, and sometimes even that's too much. <clears throat> um, and then I tend to have a book in every room that's different. Like, I've got, I'll have one in the basement sometimes. I used to have one down here. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. they're up there. Okay. And yeah. then I have one on the mid floor that lives, like, around my desk. And then I have one up in the bedroom that lives in the bedroom. And then wherever I am, I have a book. And sometimes if I really get into something, I carry that one with me, like I mm-hmm. said, from room to room to room. Right. But if I just want to read and I've got <clears throat> something somewhere, I just read it. That's... Uh, yep, that's how my brain works. I just pick it up and I go, and I'm like, oh yeah, that thing was happening. Whoa, oh, oh my gosh, why? Why did I put this down? Oh yeah, I wanted to get a drink, so I went upstairs. <laughs> that's that's kind of how it works. And then, yeah, and then yeah, it has to be quiet. I I can't read with with noise. I've tried. I can sometimes yeah. read uh, when when Stephen is gaming, and mm. that noise is okay. But if it otherwise, no. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Obviously, yeah. I read at the gym, so yeah. I can't get away from noise. Nope. There's Mm-mm. machines whirring. There's people grunting around me. <laughs> Makes for a great ambiance for reading, you know? Fantastic <laughs> atmosphere. <laughs> Seven! <laughs> Makes for a great atmosphere for reading. You can really get lost in that world, in that environment. Um, <laughs> Run away from the grunting. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's amazing. <laughs> so yes, that is my reading environment. So yeah, um, that's a sweaty, I, smelly. <laughs> yes, yes. It's yep. not the smell of books that I'm struggling nope, with. It's nope. not the paper and the ink. Nope, it's sweat. Yep, yep. It is. It is lots of sweat. It's a very moist environment. Yes. Oh, oh dear. Okay, so all right, moving on. So uh, I'm a. You probably would have figured this out uh, <clears throat> based on my prior comments that I like to stick with one series. <laughs> I am a one book at a time kind of guy. <laughs> I have to get through that one book before I can move on to something else, unless the book just has not captured my interest. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> How long does it take you to decide if a book has your interest? Okay, so here's the thing. Um, usually, I will stick out a book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The only time I will not stick out a book is if I am confused or Uh, well actually i shouldn't say confused Uh, okay i'm gonna give an example because i like michio kaku who is a theoretical he's well i don't know if he he's a physicist Mm -hmm. and he writes about physics he writes about the universe and he writes about you know the physics that affect our daily life he's done some really interesting Mm -hmm. things with um you know the way that the world is going to look a hundred years from now based on how technology is progressing or like how 
the technology of science fiction, how it would manifest in the real world, if it's possible, if so, how long it would take us to get there. Mm -hmm. I find his work fascinating, and he writes in a way that, you know, I think I'm fairly intelligent, but, you know, it, uh, the way that, you know, a... A normal person can understand. I think I'm fairly intelligent, mm -hmm. but I'm not a physicist. Right, right. You know? <clears throat> one of his books, and I don't remember which one, I understood everything, mm -hmm. but it had much more of a textbook feel, mm. so I was not enjoying it, yeah. so confused isn't the right word for it, yeah. but normally I will stick out a book unless it's just, like, pulling teeth for me to open, turn that next page. Like... Mm -hmm. That one, I was reading it at the gym, and I, I remember I was on the elliptical machine, and I had read it for about 10 minutes. Yeah. I was about 10 minutes into my, my cardio, and it was just like, okay, I am not enjoying this. Yeah. I would rather just look at the time ticking by than continue reading this. So it's just if I'm at, like almost dreading opening yeah. the book back up. That's really mm -hmm. the only time that I'll give up. Otherwise, I'll stick it out, just yeah. <clears throat> see if it captures me somewhere later mm -hmm. on. I won't pick up if I'm if it doesn't capture me. I won't pick up the next book in the series. Right. But usually, I read all the way to the end. And you? I give it a hundred pages. Hundred pages. Mm -hmm. That's usually my mark. I'm like, Great show. and that's I feel that's fairly generous. I'd say so. <laughs> I mean, it's not a snap judgment. No, certainly. it's like mm -hmm. yeah. But I, that said, I have made snap judgments on things before because I, I have started things. I'm like, oh, this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just put it down and move on. Unfortunately, that happens sometimes with the book club books. Mm. Gotcha. But it's okay. Yeah. Just because those are so outside the realm of mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Um, we pick random things. So, But, uh, yeah, I usually give it about 100 pages. And then if, I mean, if I'm flying through it, then that doesn't come into play. Right. If I'm like, eh, yeah. kind of look at the page count, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh. I guess I can keep going, and then I kind of yeah. just go a little further and a little further, and then if mm -hmm. I get to 100, I'm in that same place. It's like, yeah. I'm just not enjoying it. I don't right. care if I pick it up again. It gets lost under a thing of clothes. Like, I don't care at that point, so yeah. I just put it down and move gotcha. on. Gotcha. Gotcha. I also reread things a lot. If I find something that I really love, I will reread it four or five or six or seven times. I rarely reread. Oh I mean, I do occasionally. I do. There are some books that I yeah. read. Yeah. There, I have a list of books in my head that mm -hmm. I want to go back and reread, yeah. but my back catalog of books that I own that I haven't touched yet is yeah. so big that I never find myself doing it. Is the oh my thing. gosh? If I get into the mood for something, like I, I almost have to start reading it. Mm -hmm. Like it just will like nag at me, and I won't yeah. want to read anything else until I, I read. Yeah, I, I love to reread. I had a. I, I go to a lot of bookstores. Independent bookstores are incredible, and mm -hmm. you should go to them, and you should live in them, and you should buy things from them. Um, and so I was in one of those one time, and I was talking with one of the owners there, and I, and she asked me how I thought about something, and I was like, it was good. I was like, but it's not something I would reread. And mm -hmm. her response was, well, why would you reread anything? There's so many new things coming out. And mm -hmm. I always thought that was fascinating. I'm like... But it's like a friend. It's like yeah. going back and having a conversation yeah. with someone that I know and enjoy. That's that's why yeah. I reread. So it was just I, it was an interesting perspective. I see. I know people who feel that way about movies too, mm -hmm. and I just it's a foreign concept. Yeah. To me. If I enjoy it, I want to experience it again. Yeah, so exactly. I completely get yeah. where you're coming from. I just rarely choose to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I just it was it was interesting. So that's gotcha. all. And I just yeah, I just want a hug from my friend. <laughs> Hello, book friend. <laughs> So, last question on the reading front. Yeah, this is a... Medium. Medium. Print, electronic. How do you read? Print. Give me that book. Yeah. Give me the smell. Give I... me the heft. <clears throat> get, like, just... Get, I, I, I don't know. I feel like from start to finish, picking up a book mm -hmm. is an experience. Yeah. You know, and... because if I want something hefty and long and big, I want to be able to feel that and have to prop it up with a pillow on myself in order mm -hmm. to hold it up. If I want something quick and snappy, I want, I want to feel that. I want to feel mm -hmm. the smaller size and the less pages and yeah. everything. I'm a print guy as well, but I have, I, like I have the Amazon Kindle app on my phone mm -hmm. and I have books I've downloaded for it. Yeah. I don't think I have read anything on it in, like, two years. Mm -hmm. There is a book on there that I read. I'm going to get another plug. Okay. Nick Stuver. 
Next Wolves Taylor. of Ragnarok. He is a Cincinnati author. He's a solid guy. Um, his Hi, Nick. <clears throat> Wolves of Ragnarok is a, a, I really enjoyed it. Nice. He is it's you know a modern day story, modern day world, but it is it's about Norse mythology. Cool. Very cool book. Yeah. I recommend it. And again, he is a good person, so I would recommend checking out Wolves of Ragnarok. You can download it on Amazon. But mm -hmm. anyway, I think that's the only book I've ever read on my app, Amazon Kindle app on my yeah. phone. And <clears throat> for me, part of it, yes, I like the heft and everything you said, but part of it is also that I am just my personality type. I'm a mm -hmm. collector. Uh, I yes. collected comic books. Mm -hmm. I collected movies. I collect video games. I collect books. Mm -hmm. I don't like giving up my collection. There's something very mm -hmm. comforting about being able to go into my basement, yes. which is the Shameless Plugs lab. Yes, it is. The, uh, <clears throat> there's something comforting about being able to look at my bookshelf down in the basement and see my books there and, or to see my video games or to see my comic books I don't have out in that displayed mm -hmm. in that same way. But, you know, there's something comforting about that. So. I, I mean, my office is just shelf after shelf after yeah. shelf. So mm -hmm. I totally <clears throat> understand that. And yeah. it's just like to look around and be like, man, like this is someone's voice on mm -hmm. paper. And yeah. it's very, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I <laughs> can look at the covers if I bring up yeah. like a Kindle and that's just not the same thing to me. Well, and there's a feel to it as well. There's like, I don't know, like, <clears throat> like I just said, I just reread the Rothfuss books and like the paper feels different than my Carol Berg books. Like, mm -hmm. there's just, I don't yeah. know, the whole thing, it. like, it's, and the, the <clears throat> uh, yeah, I don't know. There's something I, about the, the, yeah, the yeah. print mm -hmm. and the yeah, spacing yeah, and everything. Just, yeah, there's, there is. I, I'm with you. As much as, as much as reading is about the words mm -hmm. and what they say and what they mean, there's also a visual component to it that I think that gets lost, mm -hmm. and I don't think many writers take it to that level mm -hmm. it's like words yeah. paragraph words paragraph words mm -hmm. paragraph but there is also something about like seeing it like yeah that's a gigantic paragraph so it must there must be something going on to make it that mm -hmm. way and then that's dialogue <clears throat> and it's short and it's like i don't know so there's yeah. just a whole thing that i feel like you get it on the page and it gets kind of lost on a tiny screen yeah i i think the thing for me to the point you're making mm -hmm. is being able to see the entire two-page spread in front of me mm -hmm. as opposed to having to scroll and seeing it it feels very much the same mm -hmm. on an electronic device. Yeah. You don't get that variety. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I completely agree. <clears throat> so, if you are an electronic reader, we'd love to hear from you mm -hmm. about why you like it, if it's a convenience thing, if mm -hmm. it's a, you know, because I, I imagine there are very big pros to that. If oh, it's absolutely. on your phone and you're yeah. commuting on a train... Well, yeah. yeah, then you have it. You just pull it mm -hmm. up and, you you know, you read it. Or, yeah. like, I get all of my news on my phone, mm -hmm. you know. So, like, I read, <clears throat> I, have, I have subscriptions to a couple different newspapers and magazines, and I get all of that on my phone. Mm -hmm. So, for me, like, that's a whole different medium than books. Yeah. So, talk yeah. to us. Let yeah. us know. Yeah, please do. <clears throat> so. So. We've kind of teed up the writing conversation we because we're Woo really going to be discussing pretty much the exact same topics, yeah. except from the writing standpoint. More habits! Yes, more habits. So, habits, habits, habits. <laughs> location. Where do you write? <laughs> um, when do you write? <laughs> hmm. Ooh. Uh, I tend to write in my office. Mm -hmm. Usually. Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> or if I'm starting, if I have a new idea, if I'm trying to get a new idea going, I usually handwrite that, and I can handwrite that, I'll go out of the house. Usually mm. I'll go to, like, a coffee shop. Again, independent coffee shop. <laughs> <clears throat> um, local coffee shop. Um, and I'll pull up a table, and I'll order myself some tea, and I'll do my handwriting there, and just kind of get the idea hashed out, and then I'll come back to my computer and work at home but yeah it's primarily in my office i got i have a really great space it's beautiful and i love it so um <clears throat> yeah that's that tends to be it and when hey, whenever i can yeah um yeah if i get a free quiet minute i am usually up there trying to hash something out yeah understandable i uh <clears throat> i cannot 
handwrite. I can't do it. I, I cannot bring myself to do it. My handwriting is god-awful, as <laughs> Samantha knows. So it's my... kind of like a toddler doctor. <laughs> I write in all caps. There's no <laughs> cursive ever. It's great. Uh, <laughs> um, my handwriting sucks. I'm mm. so much faster with a keyboard than I am with a pen and paper. Mm -hmm. um, and since I have limited time to write, mm -hmm. it's just much more efficient and effective. I, I feel like I don't accomplish anything when I write by hand. The that. only time I write by hand... <laughs> and this is another throwback to one of our previous episodes, is when I'm in meetings and I get an idea yeah. and I just need to get it down. Oh, yeah. Like if I get a snatch of dialogue, mm -hmm. I sit and write that by hand. But then as soon as I get back to a computer, I put it in my email or mm -hmm. I put it on my phone or whatever. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I uh, write pretty much exclusively in the Shameless Plugs Basement Laboratory at my mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. uh, my computer down there... Um, and as for when, it, I am an early bird. Um, I get up around 4.30 in the morning <laughs> um, every weekday and around 5.30 on weekends. So I am an early riser. So after I go to the gym, I will come back home and write before I need to leave mm -hmm. for work. Or in the evening after the kids go to bed, <clears throat> until I go to bed, mm -hmm. I'll use that time to write. So it's... Early morning, late in the evening, and then at work, I will write during my lunch break. I will uh, log into my email, and I'll just have a draft going in my email. Um, so those are the three times that I write. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's not exclusively in the basement lab. It's my, also my work computer when yeah. I'm on my lunch break. Right. So. Yeah. <clears throat> no, that's a... Uh... That is a good time. I need to get better at that writing on my lunch i've been trying but then i get busy and bored you, and you get busy you get interrupted yeah. so it's not nearly as efficient as the morning writing mm -hmm. sessions and so yeah. on um but it's one of those things where i need more time to write i'm gonna take it yeah oh yeah absolutely <clears throat> i think we all do and i think that's like that is the one thing about you know you hear you you read and you hear things about people's writing schedules like they write for x number of hours a day at the same time and mm -hmm. da, 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 da. yeah well if you work 40 hours a week and you have family right <laughs> right it's yeah. uh a little harder to do that so yeah. it's about finding the times that fit around that family schedule and yep that's and that's exactly what i do as well you know i just if, if steven's at work i usually am writing <clears throat> yeah yeah and those are my times completely get it Mm -hmm. So one thing, we didn't talk about this on the reading side, yeah. so I'm going to ask you on reading and okay. writing, how many things do you read or write simultaneously? Like, how many projects, books do you have going at the same time? You kind of touched on the number simultaneously. I can have multiple books being read at one time. Actually, we did touch on this on reading. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. Apologies. Short-term memory loss yes, happens yes. when you get a little older. Yeah, thanks. Rub that in. <laughs> Moving on. So, <laughs> so, I'll just go ahead and answer my own question now. No, I was answering your question. I was going to be kind and just answer it. You uh -huh. didn't even, if you didn't remember. Yeah, I was, writing. Go. I was going to be like, oh, well, I read multiple things at once. Yeah, how many, how many things do you write at the same time? Yeah. Um, and this like... is the last episode of Shameless Plugs because I don't like Samantha anymore. Oh, Whatever. wait a minute. <laughs> just, because of, just because of an old joke? Yeah, mm. thanks. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> so Shameless Plug ends at episode 10. Yes. No, not really. It'll yeah. keep going. It will keep going. It's a, it's a good yes. time. Yes. Uh, writing stuff. I write... Well, hmm. This is a slightly loaded. So I have <clears throat> usually one primary thing that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Um, if I get a new idea or if I see like a writing contest that looks interesting to me, I will also start working on that. So I'll mm -hmm. kind of split my time between those, <clears throat> like the two pieces. Yeah. <clears throat> and then sometimes I just need to get into a different story and work out my brain cobwebs. You know, because, like, sure. if you kind of get in the same rotation with the same characters and it gets mm -hmm. a little monotonous, it's like little cobwebs start to form. Yes. So I'll open up something else and I'll shake those out and then I mm -hmm. have a better chance of getting further in the thing that I'm primarily working on. So I can yeah. have, like, I don't know, three-ish things going at once. Mm -hmm. 
Gotcha. Uh, for me, I usually have the one novel that I'm working on, and then it's kind of, uh, not kind of, it's a very similar mm -hmm. thing where if there's a contest I'm interested in or if you and I have challenged one another yes, in some yeah, way, uh -huh. um, uh, those kind of things, I will uh, write simultaneously mm -hmm. something for one of those. But <clears throat> otherwise, it's pretty much the one novel. Mm -hmm. I, I'm finishing up the one that I'm about to query, and then I'm going to move on to its sequel. Right. So, you know, which, of course, I have already plotted. Of course so. he has. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, plotters. <laughs> They're so funny. <laughs> But I think that's also, and as our favorite topic, plotters versus panzers, yes. I think that probably comes down to a slight difference between plotters and panzers. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. You've plotted the whole thing out. Yes. You'll still be surprised by some things that happen. Yes. But ultimately, uh -huh. you know where you're going. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the wind's, the wind's <laughs> headed east today. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I had this really great idea, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. That was a conversation we had a yeah, couple, a couple days ago. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Just like, so. I had this terrible idea over the weekend, and I know I shouldn't do it, but yeah. I want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Her main character almost got killed. <laughs> Just because. <laughs> Just because. It was such a and good idea. It was fake killed. It wasn't real killed. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Don't worry about it. It didn't happen. <laughs> I talked myself out of it. Uh-huh. <laughs> kind of. It's still kind of there. But no, I'm not going to do it because I can't. Because if I knock him off, then what yeah. do I got left? Yeah. Half, half, half a, a novel? Half a novel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it doesn't work that way. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> and that, and in moments like that, in moments mm -hmm. of crazy weakness like that is yeah. when I swap over to something else. Yeah. And work the bugs out, and then gotcha. get back into it. So yes. that is, that's a good example. But yes, that did happen. I came in, and I was like, I had a terrible idea. Yeah, she was telling me about this, and I was just shaking my head. <laughs> the entire conversation was, my side of it was just me shaking my it head. It was, it yeah. was. And then at the end of the conversation, I believe the only word you said was, pantsers. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I think it might have been a, you silly pants. Yes, but. I think that's what it was, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then this is kind of, this, this question always makes me laugh. Um, do you write with noise? Okay, so, I usually, usually am more efficient if I have no noise whatsoever, or, <laughs> or, if I just have a bunch of MP3s on shuffle. Okay. I don't get as distracted if I don't have, like, a certain mm -hmm. mood going on. Got it. So, like, I wouldn't just put on a, a list of punk MP3s because then I would get caught up in the songs. <laughs> yeah. the, the not knowing what was going to come mm -hmm. next is, is helpful for me mm -hmm. because uh, <clears throat> my musical tastes are all over the place. I have as much Tupac mm -hmm. as I have Pennywise on my playlist. Mm -hmm. I have as much mm -hmm. Sinatra as I have Gladys Knight. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, mm -hmm. I, I have Motown. I have rap. I have Backstreet Boys. I have, I mean, like, my tastes are all over the place. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> I mean, yes, punk and rap and are probably the two that I listen to most, but, And again, boy bands. <laughs> I sing along with boy bands. I don't <laughs> listen to them as much. <laughs> Like Queen, and there's a lot of that. But it, I like, if I lock into one play set, and I do have, you know, a novel playlist, mm -hmm. songs that I associate with the novel and different scenes and so on, I have those playlists. But if I listen to those, I start paying more attention to the music. Uh, mm -hmm. um, sometimes I will just need a certain mood in the background for a certain scene, but that's few and far between. The other thing that I'll do is if I have a certain mood in mind, because, for example, I'm mm -hmm. writing a superhero novel. My first novel is a superhero novel. I might put on a certain movie like Spider-Man or something mm. in the background and have it play. Usually, if it's one that I know really well, I don't get distracted, but that's the downside. Occasionally, I'll get distracted, and then it's just like, okay, I have to turn it off. I have to go back to complete silence. So it's usually, just depending on my mood, it's silence or a playlist on shuffle. <clears throat> And you? I I do enjoy having music on in the background when I write, but I have I have a writing playlist that I have, and it, it's the same for all of my stuff. Mm -hmm. It's 
kind of this just yeah just a bunch of they're kind of songs that are in the same vein there's stuff that i like but can kind of like just zone out to or you know listen to for a second and then get back into it um and then if that's kind of distracting then i um I really like piano. I really like the just it, it's super calming for me. So mm-hmm. um, there's one pianist that I really enjoy, Yuruma, and I apologize mm-hmm. if I butchered that. It's it's a <laughs> South Korean name, um, and I'm so sorry. But I, I really I love I love his stuff. I love mm-hmm. his style. I love the sound. I love the just the movement of it. It's mm-hmm. just very like fluid for me. So I I tend to listen to that a lot. I put that on in the background and just just go so um but i can write and this is kind of the opposite of my reading i can write when it's quiet Mm -hmm. but i tend to key into different noises then like Mm -hmm. just like i said like the white noise in my house like i hear it and i'm like what was that yeah what was that oh shoot the dryer's done i need to go get the stuff out or Mm -hmm. oh my gosh the dishwasher just finished i should go do that or like so it's very i need something to like take away the white noise otherwise mm-hmm. i'll get distracted by chores right <clears throat> chores are stupid chores are stupid clothes should just wash themselves mm-hmm. and dishes shouldn't get dirty so we should reach out to michio kaku and find out when these things are going to happen yeah. for us yes yes please <laughs> please do i just want to know mm-hmm. so yeah so that's kind of with reading, I don't want any noise. Yeah. With writing, I need to take away the house noise. Otherwise, I will want to, not want to do, but think that I should do Yeah. those things. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. I think that wraps up this episode. I think it does. I think that so. does. This is uh, this is episode 10. We're, yes. we're on 10 episodes yes. now. Yes, double digits. Double digits. Boom. What? 10! <laughs> Sorry, going back to my <laughs> exercise thing earlier. <laughs> that's awesome thank you everyone as always for listening let us know what your habits are let us know if you think we're completely crazy which you can you're wrong but you can i mean you're more than welcome to say that yeah um but if it's if it's opening a dialogue we'll be happy to talk with you if you're just hating yeah then you can contact us at we don't care we don't care.com correct uh so anyway bye bye thanks everyone